office in order to give it to your kingdom. Lord, I want to ask you to bless all those that give, bless all those that have a desire to give. We will give it to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Good morning. I 
October the 6th, 1973, was the Jewish Day of Atonement or Yom Kippur, the holiest day of Israel's calendar city. This was also during Ramadan, a holy month in Islam. There was no reason for the nation of Israel to expect any military action against them. Certainly, it was 25 years since Israel became a, uh, became a formal state in 1948. There have been a few uh, seasons of armed conflict just to maintain their existence. Israel had already survived the Suez Crisis, the Six Day War, and, uh, and what was commonly called the War of Attrition. The idea of defending itself against her enemy was regrettably, regrettably familiar, but no one expected it on August, on, the, on, the, on the October morning in 1973. But it came anyway. Forces from Syria, Egypt, Jordan, Iran, Saudi Arabia, Libya, Tunisia, Algeria, Morocco descended on Israel in the early morning hours. There was, uh, there was uh, supplemental, by, uh, supplemental by forces from Fidel Castro, Cuba. They were primarily tar uh, targeted. Uh, targeted, targeted was the Suez with the Sinai Peninsula in, a, in, 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 in the south near Egypt and the uh, Golan Heights in the north near Syria. Collectively, the attacking force outnumbered the Israeli defending, the Israeli defense force, the IDF, by three to one. Plus, Israel's enemies uh, were armed with the latest in the Soviet military in, in Soviet military equipment, including double the tanks and artillery pieces. The outcome seemed to be a foregone conclusion to the aggressor, and the rest of the world will watch. Uh, and to the rest of the world watching, which gave uh, with great concern, but God had other plans for his special people. The IDF launched a counterattack just seven days later. They had pushed the enemy forces in the north back far enough that the Israelis were able to lob artillery shells into, uh, into the Syrian capital of Damascus. By the time the United States broke a ceasefire on October 25th, just 19 days after the surprise attack, the IDF was within approximately 60 miles of the Egyptian capital of Cairo. Many consider this to be one of the top five most surprising military victories in history. Uh, there, can, they can be, there can be very little question that God intervened on the behalf of his people in the 1973 conflict, and that, and that, should, be, that should come as no surprise. Every child of God who lives for him for any significant length of time has seen God, has seen him do the same. By the power of his spirit, they live within, they live within us, they live within us. We have seen him snatch victory from the jaws of defeat time after time. Just as the situation looked hopeless, a victorious outcome is affected by the move of the spirit. Born again believers have uh, a residing powerful source of victory producing miracles more spectacular than the Yom Kippur War. <coughs> Humanity is able to triumph over, fle over flesh and sin and death by the mighty, uh, by the might of the Holy Spirit. Minister Allen.
seventh chapter of Romans. Amen. As Paul, by the influence of the Holy Ghost, is given uh, revelation to the reality of our human nature. Right. Amen. In one place he said, For I know yeah. that in me, that is, in my flesh, uh -huh. dwelleth no good thing. Amen. Amen. I didn't write this in my notes, but the rich young ruler came to the Lord, and, and he said to the Lord, Good master. And the Lord said, Why callest thou me good? But there is none good. Right. Praise God. I mean, he wasn't denying the fact that he was good, but he was saying that in our flesh there is none good. Right? Yeah. Amen. David recorded in Psalm 51 and verse number 5. He said, Behold, I was shaken in iniquity, uh -huh. and in sin did my mother conceive me. Uh -huh. yeah. Amen. He said that like you and I, he was brought forth in a deliberate desire, with a, in a state with a deliberate desire to behave in an unreasonable or unacceptable way. Mm -hmm. That's what he was saying. He said our humanity came forth with a nature that is contrary to biblical truth. That's right. Amen. And so now I'm not giving us, right, a license to live in sin. Yeah. Just right. telling us the human condition. That's right. Praise God. The human condition. The human condition. That that's why, that's why the new birth experience, I say, is important. It's, it's important. important. It's important. Amen. He gives us hope. Amen. Amen. After uh, the formation of Adam and Eve, humanity was born and fall. Mm. Is that right? That's right. Amen. But that would be okay if the psalmist would have stopped there. But he went on and he said, we, we do understand we were born and fall, but he went on and said, in sin was I conceived. Yeah. The Hebrew word here for sin sounds like um, hate. Um, it sounds like hate. Uh, they translated it and they spelled it for us uh, in, and tried to put some words together for us and it's got a K-H-A-T-E. Amen. When you try to pronounce it, it sounds just like hate. Praise God. So I'm not Hebrew, so I'm not going to try to pronounce it, but at the same time, that's what it sounds like. It means that not only are you born at fault, but at your very conception, the penalty of sin was against you. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 David said, at conception, I inherited the nature to do wrong that put me at fault. Yeah. Amen. This is my problem. But can I tell you that it's not only David's problem, but it is our problem, somebody said, as well. As well. You and I live in a fleshly house that carries its own desire that are in total opposition to God and eternal life. Yeah. Praise God. Right. Amen. Lord, help me to get off the ground here. It's, it is not just that our flesh struggles in pleasing God. Amen. Our flesh cannot. That's right. Please God. Right. right. Absolutely cannot. Romans 8 and 8 says, So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Amen. Even if you're born again, as the Bible says, your flesh will not be in harmony with the, with the, with the Spirit. Is that right? That's right. Yes. Amen. Galatians 5, 17 says this, For the flesh lusted against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary, the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. Right. Amen. You don't need a devil to go to hell. Well, yeah. or disobey God. That's right. You can do it all by yourself. Yeah. Amen. You would think that this would leave us hopeless and perhaps we would give up. But again, this is why it is important to be born again. Because we need something or someone greater than ourselves to conquer the struggle of our carnal man, amen, that put us in sin, right? right. We need yes. something greater, praise God. I don't have it here in my notes, but the scripture does say greater 
is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Amen. We're thankful for the scripture in Acts chapter 1. But ye shall receive power. Yeah. Amen. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Amen. The Greek word there is, is dunamis. And we translate that oftentimes with dynamite. Amen. But if you continue on in the definition there, it speaks of inherent ability to act and perform and talk and walk like God. Yeah. So once you receive a new nature in the Holy Ghost, now you have the ability, you have a holy nature on the inside of you, amen, to communicate to, to each and every one of us, amen, the things of God. Anybody thankful for the Holy Ghost? Yes. Amen. amen. It doesn't matter what books you read. You can have more degrees than a thermometer. We cannot rely on our own willpower. We need, look at somebody say, we need the power of the Holy Ghost. We need the power of the Holy Ghost. And we need the power of the Holy Ghost. Only when we submit to God's influence, that's the real definition of grace. Amen. There is the unmerited favor, but grace is the uh, divine influence upon the heart. Amen. God's word. Amen. And leadership, can we mortify our flesh? And we can walk in the spirit. Yeah. Romans 6 and 4 says this. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father. Even so, we also should walk in the newness of life. Through obedience to the gospel, life in the spirit can be attained. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Death burial, and resurrection. Amen. Amen. Thank God for the new birth experience. Am I thankful for the new birth? Is this all right here this morning? Good. Thank yes. God for the new birth experience. Amen. I was glad when I repented of my sins. Praise God. Something happened when I repented of my sins. Yeah. I was thankful when I was baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, I, I, I'm glad that everything that I've done, amen, to that point of going in that water, my sins were completely removed. The yeah. Lord pardoned me. No longer am I held in judgment according to those particular things. And so I'm thankful that the Lord set, anybody thankful the Lord set you free from amen. your past? Hallelujah. Amen. I was glad when the Lord gave me the Holy Ghost. Amen. I began to speak in tongues as the Spirit of the Lord gave utterance, amen, and uh, the very next day showed up at work testifying of the goodness of the Lord, That's praise right. God, amen. Now, Jesus showed us what it means to submit to the Spirit of God, yeah. amen. Now, I know all of us would have done the same thing, praise the Lord. These people said, listen, look at what they were doing to Jesus. They said they were going to kill him. Amen. And then they were going to beat him. And then they were going to mock him and, and rip his back wide open. And then make him carry his own cross mm -hmm. that he was going to hang on. Yeah. Yes. You're right. And Jesus, the Bible said, he humbled himself to all of that. He submitted, yeah. he submitted to all of that. Yeah. Amen. Uh, we got to keep it real here. That's not us here today. <laughs> no, sir. No, sir. You're not going to make me carry the cross that I'm going to hang on. Right. You better get it up there by I wish I had some. Well, come on. All right now. Yeah, amen. Yes. We, we struggle with people at, at the job or perhaps somebody that we think mocking us for any apparent reason. We struggle with that. That's going to help me here. Come on. Hallelujah. Amen. If I'm going to die, amen. Sometimes this is how it was before, but if I'm going to die, I'm going to die fighting. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. I'm going to look at that. Yeah. I'm going to look at that cross and look at you, and you may as well take me out right now. <laughs> but Jesus didn't do that. Jesus knew the plan of God. Right. Jesus knew the will of God. Amen. This was part of his crucifixion. Learning how to die when the human part of him did not want to. Amen. He had to choose. If he had chosen to fight back.
back in his flesh, he would have abandoned the cross and in doing so, abandoning the will of God. Amen. I don't want to abandon the will of God. Right. And this is why the scripture tells us to take up our cross. Amen. That's part, amen, of learning to humble ourselves. Amen. This can happen to us. Unfortunately, it does take others yeah. to nail you to a cross. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yes. You can't do that by yourself. That's right. Mm -hmm. you can't do that to yourself. Thank God. Thank God for Judas. Thank God for the Roman soldiers. That's right. No. Yeah. Thank you, God. Amen. That's right. I, I do believe the Lord is, is, is there for a reason, but nevertheless, there will always be Judas's to betray you. Right. Oh, yeah. Yes. A Roman soldier to mock you. A brother or sister in the Lord who will turn you over to Pilate and want to see you persecuted. But it's the will of God that, that we become like, like the lamb. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Preach. The will of God. Go ahead, preacher. Isaiah 53 and 7 said, He was oppressed and he was afflicted. Yeah. Yes. Go ahead, Go ahead. It's powerful. Yet he opened right. not his mouth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well. Man, we're so quick to defend and to say some stuff. Oh, yeah. Mm. Go ahead, Richard. This, let me tell you what it doesn't indicate, though. This does not indicate weakness. Right. Just, just because he humbled himself, it does not mean that he was weak. Amen. It does not mean you, you're not going to pump me. Help me, Lord. You're not going to get me. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. He, 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 he's not weak at all. What this actually demonstrated was a man under control. Yeah. Right. Yes. Come on, preacher. Help us, Lord. Go ahead. A man who, who knew how to humble himself. Praise God. Just because you're quiet and someone else is yapping, that doesn't mean you're weak. That means you know how to control yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Praise God. Amen. And, and that's what the Lord wants us to do. He wants us to learn how. I, I've tried to teach this to, to my sons, really, because I think it's vitally important for men to learn how to control themselves. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. I'm not saying everybody, women need to do that too, but I'm saying young men, I, I think young men need to learn control. They need to learn how to manage their money. Praise God. Yes. Amen. Yes. And, 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 and it's so easy to, to fire off, you know. Somebody can just look at you. You can be in a church, in the church 20 years, and somebody look at you and, 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 and you speak very loud and clearly without saying anything. Uh huh. All right. All right. <laughs> Yes. And, 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 and the Lord is trying to help us to submit to the Spirit of God because there's good things that comes when we learn, amen, how to obey and walk in the... We scream or defend the moment we feel pain or threatened. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Amen. Uh, I hope this is making sense. Sometimes there, there seems to be situations that are more than you and I can handle. And, uh, and we may even sometimes quote scriptures, praise God, and try our best to encourage ourselves. But we feel the struggle, and it's very difficult. Amen? Amen? And somehow we, we try to get these words out. I, I know I've done it. I'm sure you've probably done it. Amen? Not my will, but, but thine be done. Praise God. Amen. And, and that is easier said than done. Praise God. It's, it's one thing to say it, but it's another thing to continue on in the process. Praise God. Amen. Uh, many of man, I know you've said it here. How many of you said that? Not my will, God. Amen. Trying our best to humble, amen, ourselves. The situation may have broken you, amen, but Amen. Look around. You're still here. Yeah. So somebody has obeyed. 
<laughs> Come on, you keep coming to the house of the Lord. Yep. Yep. Even though it hurts sometimes. Yep. And man, that situation helped you to see what it looks like on the other side of submission, even when it hurts. Yeah. Even when it hurts. Submission simply means to bring my mission. Somebody say my mission. My mission. Under his mission. Under his mission. Good, good teaching. It is learning to humble, to be humble or compliant to someone in authority. Submission is not necessarily when you and I agree with individuals. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Submission is humbling myself and cooperating with the plan and purpose of God when I don't agree. Or like how the process is formed. Right. Mm -hmm. All right, Bishop. Submission <laughs> is humbling myself and cooperating with the plan and purpose of God when I don't agree or like how the process is formed. Right. He didn't want to go on the cross, but he did. Mm -hmm. And the beautiful thing is he did not obey with a bad attitude. Amen. You, you, you know, you know, we can obey and have a, a sour attitude. Yes. Do you know that's not submission? No, that's... Remember the little boy. I mean, remember that little boy that got in trouble. Yes. And, and, and his mama said, uh, Johnny's here. Johnny, sit down. And old Johnny said, all right. He didn't want to sit down. He said, I'm going to sit down. But on the inside, I'm still standing up. All right. yes. Old me, little Johnny, wasn't in submission, was he? Yeah. He obeyed, but he wasn't in submission. Hallelujah. Amen. Man, man of God tell you to do something, you do it. And man, are you mad doing it? That help us. If you're doing things out of obedience with a bad attitude, we are not submitted. Yeah. Amen. Conquering this through prayer. Can we can conquer this through prayer? Yes. Isn't that yes. right? Yes. yes. Amen. And and obedience to the scripture. What Jesus showed us while bound by the limits of humanity is that through prayer and obedience we can live victoriously in the spirit. Amen? Amen? Amen. Prayer is not a mechanism to get what you want from God. Amen. That's right. right? That's right. Prayer, prayer is there to help you and I to conform to the will and the plan of God. That's right. Amen. That's what prayer is there for. What I appreciate about the dual nature of Jesus, he was God, but yet he was man. As a man, he humbled himself. The Garden of Gethsemane was a tremendous example of breakthrough prayer. Right. Amen. Because before he got on the cross, he died in the garden. Mm -hmm. Yes. Praise God. I know the scripture tells us that Matthew 7, I'm trying to hurry up. Matthew 7, amen, and verse 7, it says, Ask, and it shall be given you. See, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh, receive it. And he that seeketh, find it. And to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. How many of you have been praying for that uh, brand new uh, uh, Jaguar? Amen. It's a Cadillac. Thank you, Jesus. John fills us in it fills us in to the type of prayer that we can truly have confidence in. Listen to this prayer here, or what John says here. In John, 1 John 5 and 14, he says, And this is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything, somebody say anything, according to his will, he heareth us. Praise God. You know, we got to ask 
in accordance with the will of God. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. And sometimes in situations we don't always know what the will of God is. Yes. This is why I think Jude was good when Jude wrote and said, praying in your most holy faith. Praying in the Holy Ghost. This is why it's all right to talk in tongues a little while. Yes, it is. Amen. This is all right. Amen. Verse 15 said, if we know that he heareth us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have, I feel the Holy Ghost, that we have the petitions that we desire of him. Praise God. The reason this is important is because not all the time will God deliver you from something. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Praise God. The question is, can we still have victory in the spirit if you and I have to go through something? Yeah. Yeah. Philippians 4. Philippians 4, verse number 11. Not that I speak in respect of one, for I have learned in what whatsoever state I am in, in whatsoever state I am, therewith to be content. I know how to be abased, and I know how to abound. Everywhere in, and in all things, I'm instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can, somebody say I can, do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Paul said, I am going to learn to live in a state of victory because I have learned some things. Yeah. Yes. The longer you live for God, you will learn some things. Right. Oh, yeah. Amen. Amen. You can get a good education living for the Lord. Yeah. Amen. Amen. In yeah. order to have victory through the Spirit, we have to learn patience. Yeah. Somebody say, I know you say don't, don't pray for it. If I can't do it, I need his help. Yeah. I say, Lord, help me with some patience. Well, yeah. Come on. Yeah. Hey, listen, if you don't ask for it, it's going to happen anyway. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Give it to you. Give it to you. Luke 21, 19 said, In your patience possess ye your soul. I like this verse of scripture because it speaks to steadfastness. Consistency, yeah. regardless of your situation. In the New Testament, the characteristic of a man who is not swerved from his deliberate purpose and his loyalty to faith and piety by even the greatest trials and suffering. Amen. Thank God that He gave us the strength to operate in patience. Yeah. Right? Please hear me. The spiritual battle. And what you and I are engaged in is fierce. Yeah. Yes. The enemy, the enemy of our souls is not playing fair. No, he's not. This is why, this is why we should take the matter of our salvation seriously. Seriously. I lift your hands and say, Lord, help me. Lord, help to take this thing seriously. Amen. Please eliminate the idea that once you're born again, everything is going to be a bed of roses. With the thorns. Right. Amen. Go ahead, preacher. You, you, you have just stepped onto the battlefield. Yes. Amen. And before everything was fine, because. If you was like me in the world, you live like the devil. And your flesh wanted you to. Amen. And it was all fine until you said, I'm going to get baptized in Jesus' name. I'm going to repent of my sins. I'm going to get the Holy Ghost. And it seemed like all hell broke loose. Amen. <laughs> and now, and now, how many of you are on this journey to walk in the Spirit? Amen. Anybody on this journey? Amen. To walk, to walk in the Spirit. Amen. Can I tell you again this morning, we cannot do this 
without learning to be full of the Holy Ghost. Amen. That's why prayer, that's why fasting, amen, is important. Amen. That's why studying the Word of God, amen, is important. It's not enough for you just to come and pray at church or on the altar, amen, but, but uh, a lifestyle of prayer is of the utmost importance, praise the Lord, because it helps us, amen, to, to put this man down. Somebody say, man down. Man down. We got to put this man down, amen, and sometimes we got to tell it what to do. Quit telling me what to do. Y'all had that fight with yourself? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Romans 8, 13 says this. For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. Oh, amen. But if you through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, you shall live. Amen. The Bible is right. If you live in pursuit of your fleshly desires and appetites and never repent, then hell is your portion. But through the power of the Holy Ghost, you say no to appetites of the flesh that displeases God and yes to his ways. You will not only make heaven your home, but you will reap the benefits and the protection of living holy right here. Yeah. Amen. In this day and age. Amen. Anybody thankful for that? Praise God. Amen. Amen. I'm thankful for that. Amen. We know that there is a struggle. We do things sometimes that we shouldn't do. Isn't that right? But we cannot use the weakness of our existence just to sin. Because we know that it is a struggle. Listen to John, 1 John 2. My little children, these things write I unto you, that ye sin not. Yeah. Amen. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father. Jesus Christ the righteous. And he is the propitiation, amen, for our sins. And not for ours only, but also for the sins of the world. And hereby we know that we know him if we do what we want. This is how we know that that Chuck Allen knows him if we keep his commandments. He that said, Go ahead, take your time, preach. Hallelujah. He that said, I know him and keepeth not his commandments is a liar. Mm. And the, that, that's the word. John said, I'm giving you instructions yeah. to keep you. From sin. Now, I know what the rest of the verse says, but we cannot take it lightly that he inspired, John was inspired by the Holy Ghost to give us what we need. Somebody say to overcome sin. To overcome. But if we sin. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. But if we sin, we can humble ourselves and repent. And be free from condemnation because we have an advocate. Jesus Christ the righteous. Amen. Thank the Lord one more time, would you, for Amen. Being the advocate and helping us. Hallelujah. Amen. I hope I hope you feel this way. I'm not getting up in the morning. Amen. Just to go do wrong. I'm not getting up med premeditating. Amen. How I'm gonna go somewhere and sin. I, I, I I try to get up and do the right thing. Praise God. Yes. If my flesh ain't intact, praise the Lord. Amen. I skip prayer and I don't read the Bible. Uh -huh. That day. Because yeah. we need manna every day. Yes. And it'd be real easy to go to work and the boss say something that I didn't like. And oh my goodness. Yeah. Here we go. <laughs> yep. Right. Praise God. So it's, it's, it, it, amen. Listen to what the Lord will do. The Lord will, uh, the Lord Jesus will deliver us. Mm -hmm. Amen. From the penalty. Somebody say penalty. Penalty. Of sin. That's not only what he delivers us from. He also delivers us from the practice. Mm. Yeah. 
of sin. Yeah. The practice. Not only do he deliver us from the practice of sin, but he also delivered us from the power of sin. Amen. amen. So he delivered us, amen, from the penalty of sin. Look at somebody say, he delivered us from the penalty of sin. He delivered us from the practice of sin. And he delivered us from the power. Thank you, Jesus. So if we sin, it's because we chose to. Yes. Like one preacher said, hey man, we have tried to redefine it by dumbing it down and saying, well, everybody's making mistakes. Yeah. He said if a, he said if a, a, a lady uh, shows up and uh, she's not really pregnant, but she looked pregnant, and you say, man, how, what'd your baby do? He said, that's a mistake. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Oh. <laughs> it's a mistake. But if I pick up my phone and I get to surfing on the internet and I see that thing pop up and I click what pops up, that's not a mistake. Come on now. No. No. Amen. But if we sin, yeah. yes. we can humble ourselves. Yeah. Amen. We can repent. Praise God. It's not enough to, uh, to ask God for forgiveness, but uh, continue to practice and live under the rule or control of sin. Amen. I, I got a lot here. Romans 1, uh, Romans 6, 1, verse number 7 says, For he that is dead is freed from sin. Uh, verse 9 says, Knowing that Christ, being raised from the dead, dieth no more. Death hath no more dominion over me. Amen. For in that he died, he died unto sin once. But in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey it in the lust thereof. Neither yield your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin. But yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. Come on. For sin, sin, verse 14, shall not have dominion over you. Yeah. Uh -huh. Amen. For ye are not under law, but under grace. Yeah. Amen. I pray this often. Sin shall not have dominion over me. Amen. Amen. Make that a prayer. Sin shall not shall have not. dominion over me. You and I, as we grow, must learn to say no to sin right. and submit to the word of God. Yeah. Amen. You know what? Calvary, Calvary destroys sin's ability to maintain its grip on our life. Right. Amen. I'm trying to hurry up. First Corinthians. Amen. Uh, 15. Verse 55 to 57 says, O death, where is thy sting? Yeah. Yeah. O grave, where is thy victory? Uh -huh. The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, yes. which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Would you clap your hands and thank God for the victory? Thank you, Lord. Amen. God's word gives us victory. Amen. Victory, victory is not something we must win. Right. Yeah. That's right. Victory is a reality of our spiritual inheritance. Amen. Look at somebody and say, you might not feel like it, but you're victorious. That's a part of who you are. Yeah. That, 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 that is in your spiritual DNA. Yes. Hallelujah. You, you, Sister Wobu, you are victorious. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Sister Lisa, you are victorious. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. We're, come on, look at somebody and say, you are victorious today. Yes. Hallelujah. That's our DNA. That's who we are. 
Hallelujah. We just got to activate that. Say activate it. Activate, activate. It. activate it. Hallelujah. Amen. Please hear me. What we feel like does not dictate what is true. Right. You may not be living, amen, to your full potential, but that doesn't mean it's not there. Right, right. You are victorious. Amen. amen. First John 4, 4 says, Ye are of God, yes. little children, and have overcome them. Amen. For greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Yeah. Amen. How many of you know that we can experience life and peace in the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. How many of you know that? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. How many of you are going to make up in your mind, amen, that, that, that I will live in victory yeah. through the power of the Holy Ghost, regardless yeah. of the situations that I'm facing, Yeah. regardless of what I'm going through, regardless of who's doing what and who's not doing what or whatever's going on or how tight the budget is or, amen, uh, the, the struggle at work. I am going to live in victory. Amen. I'm going to pray. Yes, Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. And I'm going to make sure that if, if if I get ready to open my mouth, I'm going to run back to the clock. Y'all got to help me. I'm going to a prayer. Amen. amen. Because I want good to come out. Amen. Over the years, I, 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 man, we all been through a lot of stuff. Amen. And, and sometimes I'll, I'll kind of back myself up because, amen, when, 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 when people are sometimes very con conflict in their nature, amen, I really don't want no parts to do that. Praise God. And you say, well, uh, well, he being timid. No, that's me saying I do not want to participate in that type of behavior. Because I want to walk in the victory of the Holy Ghost. Praise God. If I don't fight back, it's not because I don't want to. It's because I just, I'm just i trying to live in victory. And it is because I don't want to. Now, yeah. I, yeah. Praise God. Amen. I hope I said so. Praise God. Thank you, Brother Allen. When you begin to study the life of Apostle Paul and the life of Jesus, you learn about eating humble pie. Yeah. Uh, amen. Some people in the Christian world says is not necessarily receive the Spirit of God. They are incorrect. They are incorrect. It's essential Amen. to receive the Spirit of God. Yeah. yeah. I'll prove it to you. In Romans 8, there's a difference between the carnal man and the spiritual man. That the righteous of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. Yeah. But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnal minded is death, but to be spiritual minded is life and peace. Because the carnal man is intimately intimate against God. For it is not the subject of the law of God, neither indeed in thee. Notice this, verse 8. So then, they that are in the flesh mm -hmm. cannot please God. Right. Probably, we spend a large percent of the time as a common person. Mm. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Hello? Yeah. We do. That's why it's 
so important, amen, to be faithful to God, whether it's in the house of God or outside the house. Amen. To reduce that percent of living calm. Right. Mm -hmm. yes. Praise God. When we begin to see how people can become so arrogant, mm. they are smarter than you. Yeah. They're calm. That's right. Apostle Paul of Jesus never had to prove himself to humanity. Years ago, my elder in the Lord, uh, he being a young minister, he, he made this point to me. He said, uh, you're going to have to learn how to be humble by. Yeah. I, at the time, I didn't understand what he was saying. But I do now. Yeah. This church would never have came into existence if I didn't know how to eat humble pie. <laughs> if you're going to do anything for God, you're going to have to learn how to eat some humble pie. Yes, sir. Praise God. Amen. Even when it comes down to change the carpet in the church. Yeah. Right. Three people don't like that color. <laughs> Hello? Amen. Well, praise God. Does it really make any difference? Really? Huh? As long as you got a nice carpet. It, it matches. You may not like it, but it's okay. Thank you. Amen. This is what's happening in our world today in politics. Yeah. Right. Amen. Yes. Yeah. They can't do get anything solved. Right. Hate each other. Hmm. Right. Yeah. Well, if, if they can come to the place, learn how to eat on the fire. Stop walking in the flesh, but get the Holy Spirit yeah. <laughs> and, and live in the spiritual realm. Yeah. Things will get changed. Things will get better. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Someone said something to me about um, listening to services online. And uh, they were critiquing services online. And I make this point. The blessed place to be is not in a service online, yeah. but be in the house of God. Yeah. Amen. That's where you can receive a touch of the Spirit mm. of God. Yes. Praise God. And I'm not speaking against if you're sick or something like that. You can this one, but you'll get more out of church yes. if you do. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother Allen. Praise God. Amen. We're going to, I got five minutes for the rest of the 